Hi everyone. I wanted to spend this time with you talking about what your contingency plan is going to be if your chronic illness severely flares up and you find yourself in, in a crisis mode. I think I want to start from my personal experience. I've had a lot of problems with my hips during this past week and it triggered my emergency plan, which is why I'm posting this video for others to think through what their plan is or to start thinking about how they would respond. The first part is getting the essentials of life taken care of. So proper nourishment, sufficient fluids. If you normally receive assistance with bladder and bowel movements, that's also really important. And then the logistics of when you need to be in bed, but preventing bed sores and anything that's special about you in bed that's normally taken care of, you need to have a plan for it. So, to back up, it would be easy enough to keep a half a dozen frozen meals in your freezer at all times so that if a flare-up happens, you know, that part of your life is taken care of and you can solely focus on the immediate need and addressing the symptoms that you're facing. You know, I cook my meals ahead of time and from personal experience, I have confidence telling you that it works well as long as you're able to do some planning ahead. So what I mean by this is choosing the types of meals you're going to cook, then breaking that down into ingredients, and then if you want to, double or triple the recipe, provided that you have the storage for the meals as they're cooked. There is a little caveat that I would suggest that you consider with this. It's what you're going to use to warm up the food once they're taken out of the freezer. So if you're in a weak state, you want to use something that has a timer on it so that you're not risking setting your home on fire. So a toaster oven with a timer, a microwave oven, or a, you know, the stove and the timer that would be on the top that you program it for. There's a few options to go with this. Now, of course, there are lots of other strategies you could use for meals. You know, one of my family members sends a gift card at my birthday and Christmas so that I could either go to a restaurant or get meals delivered to me. And certainly this has helped me at different times when I've been at my weakest and it's been a really, really good strategy for me. Another option is there's numerous online venues now where you could place a meal and have it delivered to your home. It does get pricey if you're having to do this on an ongoing basis, but if you're in a crisis that's going to last two to three days, it may be a manageable strategy if you've started planning ahead and you have a pot of money that's designated for your meals that you don't have to be then alarmed that you're spending your rent money or you're spending your internet money or your cell phone bill or what you need for clothing. It does take a little bit of planning and even if you start right now and set aside $15 a month, over the course of 18 months or 24 months, you would have a stash of cash that could provide you with a contingency plan for the nutrition. One of my friends just took me up to get my next bulk grocery order. Um, I 
buy it online from Walmart and then go to the store and just pick up all the groceries and we take it home and I've got storage here for it. So when I was thinking about this, one of the items that keeps well is Kleenexes and toilet paper. So if you're having problems with not being able to be continent and and peeing correctly or having control over your bladder and bowel functions, it may be a little bit of peace of mind to have what's necessary for you, let's say for a six week period at a time, so that if you're not feeling well, you've got a chance to not be stressed about the immediate needs of your body. Now, I don't know what bat bladder and bowel control for you matches, but whatever is going on in your life that you're watching this video, I would give some thought to it. The next part of this is the safety net around you. I would encourage you to think through who you can talk to so that there's half a dozen people in your community that know you in real life that if you're going through a really, really hard time and you sort of need one time help parachuted into your home, so to speak, you could call on them. I understand that there's going to be people that really don't have the outside connections. Most, most churches, especially ones that are, that would be like 75 people and more, have some type of pastoral care safety net that you could approach them and explain that it would be your backup plan and really only for an emergency. And if it's not something that you're comfortable doing yourself, you could sit down with a friend of yours and put it in the form of a letter and then give the church two weeks or three weeks to respond and you include how you want them to respond. You know, a lot of the times I'll ask someone to respond by email because I have a hard time focusing on phone conversations. And then you would work out your system for getting help and, and the types of help that you would forecast that you would need and see if there could be a solution found. You do need to have the drive that the first time you hear no isn't going to cause you to shut down. You know, not everything I do works. There's a lot of times where I share projects that I'm working on here on my YouTube channel. You know, there's often times where I'm partway through a project, learn something new, and I'm all of a sudden on to plan B. So it's that same thing for real life and when you're trying to organize sort of a safety net for you, it would be helpful to be open-minded for the first time it doesn't work out for you and you have to keep looking for help. If you're genuinely struggling, what I would encourage you to do is to contact the nearest hospital's patient relations department and ask what is the you know, who you could talk to in the community. Who's the hospital chaplain? Who's the hospital social worker? Who might be a doctor's office in your community or near your community that you could talk to and find out who that safety net is just by networking and asking questions. And again, you could do this in writing. If it's easier for you one-on-one, -on -one, that's certainly an option. You could also designate a friend to do this. Um, there is a little bit of a caveat I need to add to that. There are protocols in place to respect a person's privacy. So if you are designating someone to do this, you need to be willing to give them permission to discuss the underlying health issues so that they can act as your representative and that you can receive effective help. So you might be trading off a bit of feeling vulnerable, but on the other side, it would help you have a safety net that you, you know, you can draw on during, you know, a crisis time for you. 
So when all this is organized and you've thought through your situation and what you normally struggle with and the types of solutions that you would use to address it, then I would go out and buy a binder and write down what the plans are and have each different page as a different topic so then when you're feeling really weak and vulnerable, you grab the binder and there's contact information, there's your strategy that you're going to use, and you've just planned ahead and that you're helping yourself through the hard time with advanced planning you've already done. And then to go with it, you need to review it every few months to make sure it's current if it's got the names of neighbors or churches or doctor's offices, they just make sure that the same staff are in that position or you find out who the new person is and see if you can work out a similar arrangement. It does take a lot of effort and a lot of legwork, but once you've got a plan in place, maintaining it gets a whole lot easier. And that's kind of what I wanted to share with you so that if there's not a nursing home bed available or, you know, if the hospital's full, you're still getting the help that you need. And it may not be the way things were done 30 years ago, but if it works, then focusing on the fact that it works and not that it's different than how things were done years ago would be the comfort in it, and at least you have help and you have something to be thankful for. Okay, it's a lot to think through, and definitely there's some homework for those who need to do this, but if you can get through it, it will pay off for you when that hard time hits. I want to add one other minor caveat. If you start to feel emotionally flooded, take a break. You know, start the next day or continue a few hours later. Work on this when you're well rested. Do something that, that doesn't feel urgent, but that it is a priority to complete just so that you've got your plan and that you're taking care of yourself, that you're showing initiative and you're doing what you have control over to help yourself the best way possible. Okay? It's a lot to think about, but I do hope that this will help those of you who are sort of in transition and sorting life out as you go. Thanks so much for this time that you have spent with me today. Bye for now.